Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Devo with Bo O this January 6, 2022. And better late than never is right. Um, was hoping to get in a little earlier, but I wasn't able to. So we kind of getting in here a little later on. And uh, it's always fun to be in the Devo house with you guys. We're in Genesis chapter 43 today, kind of picking up in the middle of the narrative of this man named Joseph. And what a narrative it is. I think Bob in the comment corner was telling us uh, weeks ago that this was his favorite narrative in Genesis. Um, and I could see why. There's a lot of pictures of Jesus uh, that uh, Joseph uh, certainly shows, and uh, what an outstanding guy uh, he is. And so here we're going to see some pretty radical things as well in Genesis chapter 43. And really we're hoping for a, a nice family reunion. And uh, and so let's, let's pick it up. Let's, hey, Tina, what's happening? It's good having you in the house today. So 43. But the famine continued to ravage the land of Canaan. It says, When the grain they had brought from Egypt was almost gone, Jacob said to his sons, Go back and buy us a little more food. So they spent some time, you know, thinking, mulling over kind of everything that was going on in their minds. These brothers, they've already had this encounter with uh, Joseph, you know, though they don't know it's Joseph. And, uh, and Joseph sent them, remember, back on their way to the land of Canaan uh, to see their father. But, uh, and, they, and he actually put in their grain sacks the money that they had used, these brothers had used to pay for the grain. So a real grace, uh, a picture of grace that uh, Joseph shows us in the last chapter with him. He didn't have to. Uh, basically, he, he gave them the grain for free. He gave them their money back. And man, isn't that cool? You can't buy salvation. Uh, salvation is a gift from God. Uh, there's nothing you can do to buy it. Uh, it is your money ain't going to do no good with Jesus, right? Uh, we are saved by grace through faith. And says, but Judah said, the man was serious when he warned us. You won't see my face again unless your brother is with you. If you send Benjamin with us, we will go down and buy more food. But if you don't let Benjamin go, we won't go either. But if you don't let Benjamin go, so everything's going to hinge on Benjamin. Now remember, this is important because Joseph, who now is the head leader of the Food and Drug Administration of Egypt, um, his younger brother is Benjamin and he wants to see him. And so how does this work? Uh, they're saying to their dad, Hey, you got to let Benjamin go with us. But of course, Jacob doesn't want to send Benjamin because he's afraid something's going to happen to Benjamin. And, uh, and that'll be his last child from Rebecca, the, the, the wife that he loves. And so, you know, there's, there's a family dynamic that's happening. It says, but if you don't let Benjamin go, we won't either. Remember, the man said, you won't see my face unless your brother is with you. Why were you so cruel to me? Jacob moaned. Why did you tell him you had another brother? Wow. I wonder if this is like a resentment period for Jacob. If there's like inner resentment kind of working in his life, in his heart, with his sons. He sees how their attitudes are just hardcore, just very rebellious in many ways. And it seems like it, it just keeps boiling and boiling in this family. And then Jacob, the dad, says, you know, why are you so cruel to me? And a lot of times when when we say things like that, when we just come out all of a sudden, like out of the blue, we say something like that. Why are you so cruel to me? And we put someone kind of down or we get mad at him like that. It means a lot of times that, that that person's been living in our heart and in our mind for quite some time. 
And so Jacob definitely um, uh, has this heart uh, towards his sons that isn't the best. And uh, we see it right here. Why are you so cruel to me? The best thing we could do uh, this AM is deal with our hurts before the Lord um, on a daily basis. If something happens and you're hurt, someone's hurt you, uh, you know, and something's wrestling in your mind and in your heart, and, you know, you have a family member that hasn't treated you so good, and you don't kind of know what's going on, the best thing we could do is just talk to God about that and just give it over to, to the Lord. And, uh, and not let that any kind of resentment just build and build. Because then it comes into this, why are you so cruel to me kind of statement. So pretty sad, verse 6. So verse 7 says, the man kept asking us questions about our family. They, he, they replied, he asked, is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? So we answered his questions. How could we know he would say, bring your brother down here? Judah said to his father, send the boy with me and we will be on our way otherwise we will all die of starvation remember there's a famine in the land they've gone through the grain that joseph had given to them originally and they need to go back to egypt where joseph has stored all the grain and he's distributing it he says and not only we but you and our little ones so everybody's going to starve. I personally guarantee his safety. You may hold me responsible if I don't bring him back to you. So Judah stands up. And we remember remember Judah, right? Judah and Tamar from Judah Tamar fame a few chapters back. Judah wasn't the greatest guy either, was he? Um, but here he says, "Hey, I'm going to I'm going to vouch that we're going to, you know, that we're going to take care of Benjamin." And so uh, he says, if I don't bring him back, then let me bear the blame forever. If we hadn't wasted all this time, we could have gone and returned twice by now. So from that statement, we know that, that it has been a kind of while uh, with the family having these conversations in disagreement, anger, lashing out at one another. Uh, and this has happened over a period of time because Judah says we could have gone there twice over. We could have walked all the way. We could have traveled all the way to Egypt and back twice uh, uh, as long as we've been uh, arguing about this. So their father Jacob finally said to them, if it can't be avoided, then at least do this. Pack your bags with the best products of this land Take them down to the man as gifts, balm, honey, gum, aromatic resin, pistachio nuts, and almonds. Also take double the money that was put back in your sacks, as it was probably someone's mistake. Then take your brother and go back to the man. May God Almighty give you mercy as you go before the man, so that he will release Simeon, and let Benjamin return. But if I must lose my children, so be it. So remember, Simeon, not the nicest son either of Jacob, is in prison in Egypt, kind of being held as uh, a little bit of a of a uh, kind of a incentive for the family to go back to Egypt and get him out. And uh, so um, it says, so the men packed Jacob's gifts and doubled the money and headed off with Benjamin. So finally, after all that deliberation, um, man, they finally send Benjamin. Hey, Marsha, hope you're doing good. Um, very, very stoked you're in the house. Bob says, God is so amazing. He spoke to my heart in Colossians 3, 12 through 14 in my personal Devo this morning. Oh, that's awesome. Great passage, by the way. Um, so it says they packed up the gifts. They headed out. They finally arrived in Egypt and presented themselves to Joseph. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the manager of his household, These men will eat with me this noon. Take them inside this palace. Then go slaughter an animal and prepare a big feast. So the man did as Joseph told him, 
and took them into Joseph's palace. The brothers were terrified when they saw that they were being taken into Joseph's house. It's because of the money someone put in our sacks last time we were here, they said. So they thought something was going to happen about this money that was in their sacks. Meaning, remember, they were they gave Joseph money, but Joseph gave all their money back. And they didn't know why. They didn't know why it was in their sacks. So they thought, man, they're going to get busted for something. And uh, he plans to pretend that we stole it. Then he will seize us, make us slaves, and take our, take our donkeys. So they have, check this out. When, you, when you've done a lot of bad, uh, like these brothers, what's their perspective? Isn't it negative? Isn't that interesting? It's like, you see how they're just negative. They're, they're like, man, this is going to happen. The, you know, he, Joseph's going to come back and get us and blah, blah, blah. They, see, they, have, a, they have a heavy conscience. Their conscience is really, really severed, you know, um, meaning there's something in them that's constantly tugging at their heart and saying, hey, man, you guys are guilty. You guys are guilty. And notice how they look at everything in a negative way. Very important. If you look at everything in negative ways and you look at people in negative ways. And remember, the Bible says love believes all things. It hopes all things, right? Love hopes all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things, man. I love that. You know, and if I'm not walking in love, I start looking, you know, you start, and I have a heavy heart because of sin in my life, then I could start seeing things really negative. Oh, this is happening. This is, this is, everything's manipulative. Everything's, you know, a conspiracy against me. Um, and this is how these brothers are looking at everything. Very interesting. Uh, they got a burdened heart. You know, we got to look at our hearts and go, hey, God, my heart burdened. Uh, I need to bring that before the Lord. So it says the brothers approached the manager of Joseph's household and spoke to him at the entrance of the palace. Sir, they said, we came to Egypt once before to buy food, but we were returning home. We stopped for the night and opened our sacks. And then we discovered that each man's, uh, each man's money, the exact amount paid, was on the top of his sack. Here it is. We have brought it back with us. We also have an additional money to buy more food. We have no idea who put our money in our sacks. Relax. <laughs> Verse 23 is great. <laughs> Love the version, right? A new living translation. Isn't that great? Relax, don't be afraid. The household manager told him, Your God, the God of your father, must have put this treasure into your sacks. I know I received your payment. Then he released Simeon and brought him out to them. Isn't that neat? The, man, the household manager told him, Your God, the God of your father, must have put this treasure into your sacks. Now this tells me something about Joseph as well. Joseph was a person who taught his household about Yahweh, about the true and living God. And, uh, and I love that. Laura, you, you said it right on. It says God continues to prick our hearts to bring us back to a relationship with him. Absolutely. Yep. So sometimes we can tell when our hearts are a little off just by the way we're looking at things. We can be looking at people negatively. And um, that's a real good good pointer to where we're at in our own heart. Um, uh, Tina says, right, God has to be in front of you to stay focused. We are running a race and have to finish it. Amen. So I love that Joseph shared with his staff, if you will, uh, about Yahweh. You know, he was really open to talk about God and hopefully... You have a relationship with Jesus where you love to talk about him and you enjoy sharing Jesus with people that are around you and and help them to know maybe what Jesus taught and uh, and why Jesus is such an amazing person, why the most he's the most influential person ever to walk the earth. But here Joseph does that. You see that in verse 23. It says, the manager then let, led the men into Joseph's palace. He gave them water to wash their feet and provided food for their donkeys. They were told they would be eating there, so they prepared their gifts for Joseph's arrival at noon. 
When Joseph came home, they gave him the gifts he had brought him and then bowed low on the ground before him. After greeting them, he asked, How is your father? The old man spoke uh, spoke about. Is he still alive? Yes, they replied, Our father, your servant, is alive and well. And they bowed low again. Then Joseph looked at his brother Benjamin, the son of his own mother. Is this your youngest brother, the one you told me about? Joseph asked. May God be gracious to you, my son. Then Joseph hurried from the room because he was overcome with emotion for his brother. He went into his private room where he broke down and wept. Oh, is that special, man? He sees his brother and he, this is his brother from, you know, his mom. So this is his only bro from his mom. And he's just so taken to see him. You know, I hope you have relationships with your siblings like that, where you love them so much that that you can weep, uh, you know, for them. You love them that much. Um, what a beautiful heart. It says, after washing his face, he came back out, keeping himself under control. Then he ordered, bring out the food. The waitress, the wait, uh, the waiters served Joseph at his table and his brothers were served at a separate table. The Egyptians who ate with Joseph sat at their own table because Egyptians despise Hebrews and refuse to eat with them. Now, why do you think Egyptians despised Hebrews? Why do you think that is? And I want to say good morning to my mom. Hey, mom. Yeah, why do you think Egyptians despised Hebrews? I'm going to I'm going to suggest it had to do with the uh the job. The 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 Hebrews were working out in the field and they might have been seen as a dirty group of people. Um and maybe that's why they were so despised by the Egyptians. That's my that's my kind of educated guess right off my head. Uh so you see the separation at the dinner table. Joseph told each of his brothers where to sit. And to their amazement, he seated them according to age, from oldest to youngest. Isn't this cool? Joseph puts, he, he lines them up. Reuben, he goes down the list. Simeon, Judah, he, you know, he goes down the list of the brothers. Ishtar. I mean, really cool. And he lines them up according to their age. Now, they have to start thinking something's going on. This is pretty bizarre. We're all sitting at the table according to our age. So, uh, and uh, it says, And Joseph filled their plates with food from his own table, giving Benjamin five times as much as he gave the others. So they feasted and drank freely with him. I don't know if Benjamin was just a big eater or what. Or if he just wanted to bless his brother. But, um, you know, this is, this is how God does it in our life. Is, you know, he, he just gives us so much more than we ever deserve. Uh, he gives us five times as much. <laughs> he gives us more than any, anything. And uh, that's the grace of God in our life. Uh, so much so. But you can see how this this narrative, again, again, just keeps building and building and building. Now, just on the big scope of the book of Genesis, we've had some pretty major players that we've talked about. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. But don't you notice that Joseph gets really all the chapters? Really interesting, don't you think? Joseph gets chapter after chapter after chapter. And that's because it's preparing us for something. All of this stuff that's going on in Egypt, uh, the relationship between Egypt and Canaan is going to be one that will be vital in the next book of the Bible. And so it is this part, this narrative is preparing us for when a guy named Moses comes on the scene. And so that's kind of what we're doing just in, in the big picture of the book. Um, but very interesting, right? So they're in Egypt. They're feasting. They drank freely with him. Oh, we can drink freely with Jesus. 
and enjoy him at the dinner table, so to speak, right? Jesus wants to uh, enter into our life, and he stands at the door and knocks. He wants to come in and dine with us. And I just love that. You know, here Joseph is in a place of power, prominence. But what does he do? He brings in the disgusting Hebrews, and he dines with them. Oh, cool picture of Jesus for sure. Jesus is our living water. That's right. May you guys be filled with the Holy Spirit today, and we will talk at you later. What a wonderful chapter. And uh, hey, I'm using a new mic too. I hope it's going well, the microphone. Um, I'm not using the the other mic. I uh, chose to use this uh, this this mic right here. So I'm hoping that's coming through okay too with you guys. So, hey, you guys have a great one. Thanks for all the comments and everything like that. You guys are awesome. And let's be praying for our brothers and sisters. Hey, Zeus, we definitely lifting him up. And uh, let's be praying for him, okay? You guys take care. Bye-bye.